So last night around 4.44 a.m., there was suddenly this beep, 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 beep sound. And my husband was like, what was that? And I was like, oh, it's probably an aquarium alarm. Let me show you. Hi, I'm Irene with Girl Talks Fish, here with practical tips for busy fish keepers like you. And if you didn't know already, most of the aquarium fish that you get at your PetSmart, Petco, like guppies and bettas, they are not gonna do well at normal room temperatures that you're comfortable with. So for example, imagine you as a human being being kept in 50 degrees Fahrenheit weather all the time with no extra clothes, and let's see how long you last. Now, because of my recent heater failure, I gotta get a new one. So I figured let's talk about what do I look for? How do I choose an aquarium heater? What do I do if they break? And then what are some of my favorite brands to go with? So first off, what size heater should you get? Now, the typical rule of thumb is five watts per gallon, which means a 20 gallon aquarium would need a 100 watt heater. However, that is if you want to raise the temperature by about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. If you want to do it even more, because you know, let's say your aquarium is in a really chilly office setting, or if you are like me and live in Colorado where we keep our house pretty cold, the formula is actually 10 watts per gallon. So for this 20 gallon, aquarium, I'm actually going to get a 200 watt heater. Now you may think, okay, easy enough, just get a 200 watt heater. Actually, tip number two is that it's better to have two heaters instead of one. Why do you say that? Well, if you've ever tried to buy a heater before and look on the Amazon reviews, like all of them fail. <laughs> Heaters just fail. And most of the time they either, when they fail, they just completely go cold. So that means your fish are going to freeze to death or they get too hot and your fish are gonna cook. Now, if I had two 100 watt heaters instead of one 200 watt heater, uh, did that make any sense? <laughs> I'm gonna put them both on each ends of the aquarium and let's say this one fails. Most likely both of them aren't gonna fail at the same time, right? So if this one goes cold, at least the other heater will still be able to keep the temperature relatively warm. And then if this one gets hot, well, at least it won't get as hot as a 200 watt heater would have. It will not do as much damage basically. So having two heaters instead of one is kind of like spreading out your risk. Tip number three is what heater features should I look at? Now, for the most part, heaters are pretty simple, um, but some of them have gotten really complicated. Like they have Wi-Fi connectivity, they have low flow sensors, you know, all sorts of stuff. I mainly want two things. I want it to be adjustable because, you know, that way if I want to keep um, a fish that needs cooler temperatures versus hotter temperatures, I can just use the same heater. And then the second thing I kind of like is this I guess you could call it a heater guard or basket um, so that my fish won't ever get stuck next to the heater. And I actually had an emerald green Corridoras get stuck between the wall of the tank and a heater and he passed away. So I don't know if it was because he was stuck or if like the heater burned him, but just in case the heater guard is kind of a nice thing to have. Category number four is installation. So the first thing you do is when you put your heater into the aquarium, do not plug it in. Most of the instructions usually ask you to wait about 20 to 30 minutes before plugging it in, just so it can soak in the water, acclimate to, acclimate to the temperature, and then not have any breakage potentially from temperature shock. Ideally, you wanna put this thing next to a filter, like the filter output or a power head and have good water circulation on it because if it's in a really stagnant area, let's say that's clogged up by plants, there's a lot of hot water, like hot spots that can form around the heater. And so you want that water current blowing the warm water to the rest of the aquarium. All the aquarium heaters I use are submersible, meaning they should be completely underwater. You do not wanna run it dry, otherwise it might crack or burn out. And that can be a problem during water changes. You know, imagine that water is going down below and then this is actually, a lot of the heaters have a minimum line that water needs to cover it. If it goes below that, that's not good. So I actually do turn off my heater during water changes. However, that has run, like I've run into a few problems where I've forgotten to turn it back on again. So recently I did splurge and buy a Wi-Fi timer and that way I can A, just use my phone to turn off my heater and I don't have to fumble around for the cable in the back. And also it allows me to set a timer so that I'll say, okay, in one and a half hours, automatically turn on again if I forget, which is nice. 
Finally, I like using a lid on all of my aquariums just because it tends to keep that heat in, there's less evaporative cooling, and then that helps me save electricity in the long run. Tip number five is just expect that your heater is gonna fail at some point. Now, this is problematic because I don't know about you, but I don't really look at the temperature of my aquarium very often. I just assume it's working and yeah, I need help basically. So let's take a look back at my story from the very beginning and this is how I knew my heater had failed. So you can see it's supposed to be 81 to about 77 degrees. And my low alarm is this top one and it's below 72 degrees. And that's what went off. So now if you look at the heater itself, um, the green light is actually on, not the red light. But the other reason why I like these controllers is because it has the alarm for if the temperature gets too high or too low. I definitely probably would not have noticed for quite a while if this thing hadn't beeped in the middle of the night. So, yep, temper, contro temper controllers can seem really extra, but in this case, it probably saved a lot of my fish's lives. PSA, done. <laughs> Another reason why I like temperature controllers is because Corey from Aquarium Co-op has this theory that the reason why heaters fail so often is because they're constantly having to cycle on and off. Like imagine turning a light switch on and on and off, on and on and off and off. <laughs> Try to say that five times fast. Um, repeatedly, you know, eventually that switch is probably going to break faster than if you just left it on or off for long periods of time. And so same thing with our heaters. Every time they go down by a degree, half a degree or whatever it is, they automatically have to kick off on and then they kick off again and then kick on. And so instead the temperature controller allows me to set it so that this kicks on until it reaches 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it turns off until the water naturally cools to 74 degrees, which takes a while for even a 20 gallon aquarium. And then it turns on again. And that means less power cycling for this heater and hopefully it'll last longer in the long run. If that sounds interesting to you, I've got a whole video over here on temperature controllers, but if you're looking for a cheaper alternative, uh, I also use a lot of just digital thermometers that have an alarm on it. So it goes beeps when it's too high or the temperature is too low. Just be aware they do have batteries that eventually run out, so keep an eye on that. As for my favorite heaters, I would say, I mean, in the past, I basically only bought Aquion Pros, but by now they have all burned out or <laughs> stopped working on me. So now I have some Eheim ones, I have some Fluval heaters, I even tried a little Hyger one for my baby brine shrimp hatchery that it didn't quite work out for. Um, and then eventually, I'm sure, you know, if and when Aquarium Co-op makes heaters as well, I'm gonna make sure I get my hands on those. Now, if you are dead set against getting an aquarium heater for some reason, there are definitely animals that you can get that will survive at room temperature. So you can check out their care guides over here. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.